Our planet is heating up. This is not a drill, it's a five-alarm fire, and we are standing around arguing about who should bring the water. One of the more bizarre twists in this saga is the role of sulfur dioxide. For decades, we worked hard to get sulfur out of gasoline. We worried about acid rain and smog, and rightly so. They were terrible problems. But there was a side effect we didn't fully grasp. Before 1975, gasoline contained a lot of sulfur. When cars burned this gasoline, they released sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. This sulfur dioxide had a curious effect. It acted like tiny mirrors reflecting sunlight back into space. This helped to cool the planet, offsetting some of the warming caused by greenhouse gases. As we got better at reducing sulfur emissions, the cooling effect diminished. Temperatures began to rise more rapidly. This is not to say that reducing sulfur was a mistake. Far from it. The benefits of cleaner air have been enormous, but it highlights the complexity of the climate system. We have to be mindful of unintended consequences. A sulfur dioxide is a tricky character in the climate drama. It plays a dual role, acting as both villain and reluctant hero. On the one hand, it's a major component of acid rain. This acid rain devastated forests, acidified lakes and damaged buildings. It was an environmental disaster. So, we cleaned up our act. We put scrubbers on power plants and reduced sulfur content in gasoline. The air got cleaner and the acid rain subsided. But here's the twist. That same sulfur dioxide, the culprit behind acid rain, was also helping to keep the planet cool. When sulfur dioxide reaches the upper atmosphere, it reacts with water vapor to form sulfate aerosols. These tiny particles reflect sunlight away from Earth, acting like a global sunscreen. This is not science fiction. It's basic chemistry and physics. The reduction in sulfur emissions since the 1970s has had a measurable impact on global temperatures. Scientists estimate that it has contributed to about 0.5 degrees Celsius of the observed warming. Now, as the climate crisis accelerates, some researchers are cautiously exploring whether we can harness this cooling effect to our advantage. The shipping industry provides a stark example of sulfur's impact on climate. In 2020, new regulations mandated a significant reduction in the sulfur content of shipping fuels. This was undoubtedly a win for clean air, particularly for coastal communities often blanketed by ship exhaust. However, it also removed a source of reflective sulfate aerosols from the atmosphere. Recent studies have linked this reduction in shipping emissions to a measurable increase in global temperatures. While the exact figure is still debated, some estimates suggest that the change in shipping fuels alone could be responsible for up to 0.1 degrees Celsius of warming. This may seem like a small amount, but in the context of a global climate system already on edge, every fraction of a degree matters. The shipping fuel example highlights the delicate balance we face. Reducing pollution from one sector can have unintended consequences in another. It underscores the need for a holistic approach to climate change mitigation, one that considers all the variables at play. We've made great strides in reducing sulfur dioxide emissions. Our air is cleaner, and the acid rain problem has largely abated, but as we celebrate this victory, we must also acknowledge the trade-offs. The reduction in sulfur has removed a small but significant break on global warming. This presents us with a thorny dilemma. On the one hand, we cannot simply return to polluting our air with reckless abandon. The health and environmental consequences of acid rain are too severe to ignore. On the other hand, we are running out of time to address the climate crisis. We need every tool at our disposal to avert catastrophic warming. This is not an easy problem to solve. It requires careful consideration of the science, as well as a frank discussion about our values and priorities. Do we prioritize immediate human health concerns, even at the potential cost of exacerbating climate change? Or do we explore more radical solutions like geoengineering to buy ourselves more time to transition to a cleaner energy future? These are questions we can no longer afford to ignore.